We got London on the track. And we coming like that. I always wanted to say that. Always wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, first of all, man, congratulations on your success. You know, I mean, you, you know, when you got in the game, it seemed like you just started to dominate. You had like, what, like three, three songs charting at the same time that you produced? Back to back. Back to back. That's what's up, man. So originally, you grew up in Memphis. No, I originally grew up in Atlanta, but I was born in Memphis. Ah, okay. So you grew up in Atlanta? Yeah, I grew up in Atlanta. Okay, and like, how did you start really getting into music initially? Well, I've been doing music for a long time. I've been, I've been doing music and um, I've been playing the piano for a long time. So at first I started rapping um, when I got to Atlanta. And, um, you know, we didn't have, you know, beats or nothing like that. So well, the, the, the group that I was with, we was like downloading beats from the internet and all that kind of stuff. So I felt like, you know, with, with me playing the piano, I could uh, figure out how to make beats because I knew I was going to be in the band or do some type of music somewhere if it wasn't playing the piano for people's weddings or something. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just make some beats. And I figured out how to you know make beats through softwares and stuff like that. And I started making beats for my crew. Okay, and like, what were you using, like Fruity Loops in the beginning? Yeah, that's the first thing I learned was Fruity Loops. And uh, I think that's pretty much everybody, first software that they used to yeah. make beats. And then I went to, uh, I went to uh, Full Sail in Orlando, Florida. It's like a little college out there, a uh, private school. And uh, that's when I learned Logic. And that's when I became great at it. Okay. Yeah, I definitely remember Logic. That was definitely a very important piece of software right there. Um, so, you're, you know, you play piano. Now, you play piano at the church? Yeah, I play piano at church. Yep. Because that's interesting, because I interviewed uh, Zaytoven, and he actually got his, his start the same way. Yeah, Zaytoven, definitely a musician. Yeah, and he actually still plays piano in his church. Do you still play or, or not really? I don't, I don't still play piano in church no more. I, I be traveling too much. I feel you. You know what was crazy about the Zaytoven interview is he actually gives 10% back of everything he makes back to the church still, even to this day. That's love. But I take it you're not, you're not doing that. No. Nah. I would, though. But I would if I was still in ch going to church like that, but I don't be in church like that. Hang on. Okay. I feel you. So you start out as a rapper. You start producing. And then did you see that like the production was kind of taken off more than the rapping? Uh, pretty much when I had, uh, like I said, when I went to school, I pretty much just slowed down with rapping. Like I was just making beats. I was inspired by the people I was in school with, by the music they was making. And uh, I pretty much just liked doing music at the time. I just kind of just drafted away from doing rapping. And then when I was making beats, I was getting placements. I was getting stuff done with certain artists, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. This is what people are liking. So what were your first few placements? Oh, uh, my first placement. My first placement was probably, uh, well, the first radio hit I had was, it was called Peon by Rich Kids. But my first placement had to be Tiger Hookah. It had to be. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that, that was a big song right there. Yeah, that was definitely my first billboard placement. Okay, and how'd you end up hooking up with Tiger? I didn't. That's pretty much Thug play. Thug had, we, me and Thug had did the song. We already had did the song before we even sent it to Tiger. It was really me and Thug's song, and then we was trying to put Tiger on it. So we sent it to Tiger, and Tiger just dropped it as his song. It was kind of a feature thing. It was like, okay, we're going to send it to Tiger, whoop the whoop, get his verse on there. But we sent it to him and he dropped it. He was like, oh yeah, this shit hit. So he just put it out. So it worked out for the both of us. Yeah. All three okay. of us. I, I mean, initially, were you guys upset a little bit that he did that? Hell yeah, yeah, it was upset. But you know, at the end of the day, we, we fought with Tiger, so we ain't care. It's like, it is okay. what it is. All right, so you started fucking with, with Young Thug back in like 05. Yeah. Okay, so how did you two initially meet? Oh. Uh, I think in the studios, it was, you know, uh, we met. I think the first time we met was in the studio uh, with Shawty Low and Schoolboy, my boy Schoolboy I grew up with. 
and we all did a song called Curtains. And then from there, we was just everywhere. Clubs, studios, you know, shit like that. Okay, and like, what was it about Young Thug in the beginning that sort of drew you to, to what he was doing? Um, the first, when I first met him, the, the first, like he was just doing records quick on my music. Like every time I, I play, I can play one beat, I just play one beat, he's like, yeah, that's it right there, pull it up, let's do it. So that's the thing I like about Thug more than any rapper. I ever work with that he'll do a song in 10 minutes when I when I when I work with other artists it, it make me feel like I don't even want to be there because they take hours to do a song so but you know though he knock it out in like five ten minutes so we'd be doing like 10 songs in one day we'll have a whole mid tape in one day okay because he never writes anything down no not at all so you've never actually seen him with a piece of paper I never anything. I never as long as I know Thug, I've never seen Thug with a piece of pen in the pad. Okay. Ever. So, so I mean, d describe the process that you guys go through. You you give him the beat, he said, yeah, that's the beat, and then what? Oh, uh, sometimes I do it like that, but most of the time, me and Thug, we making, we making music from scratch. So, like, I kind of, like, go off his vibe. We in the room. If he in the room, if he he might be mad one day, he might be upset, he might feel like he wanna, you know, do some gangster shit. He wanna do some girl shit for the for the hoes. Or he wanna do some uh pop overseas shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just go out vibes and then, you know, I'll make the beat and then he'll uh he'll pretty much be like, Okay, that's the sound right there, that's it right there and then I'll pull that sound up while it's so immediate and he'll just rap over it, and then he'll give it back, I'll get back the vocals, and I'll just add more to it and make it bigger than what it was in the beginning. Does it usually start with the verses or the hook, or does it, is it different? It's crazy, because uh, you don't know what he start with. He just, he, just, he just going in, and then we'll just figure it out from there. Like, he'll just go in on the whole song, freestyle the whole song, and then once we get done freestyling it, once he gets done freestyling it, we'll just pinpoint. We'll be like, oh yeah, that's the hook right there. Okay, so you might pull the hook out of a verse or something. Out of, like out of a freestyle, like he'll just, got me a check, I got a check. Oh yeah, that's the hook. You know what I'm saying? We ran on them digits. That's it. Huh. Okay. Uh, I mean, when you guys record together, does Young Thug ever say something when you just have no idea what, what he just said? When we record together, yeah, now, I, I mean, because you know, that, that's the thing about Young Thug's vocals is that it's so stylistic and so musical, but you don't always understand the verses. Do you always understand every word that he says? I feel like I'm one of the few, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that that actually know everything he's saying. I don't know. It's it's probably because I work with him every single day, and and then he's from. Atlanta, we, we know. I know his lingo. I know the way he talks. People, you know, don't know how people from Atlanta. They some people can't understand us like that. But you know, we just got that that swag, that lingo in us. It's in us. Okay, so you're fluent thuggies, basically. If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> okay, so so you guys are working together, and, and at one point, do. You know, do you does Young Thug say London is like my main producer? This is who I'm fucking with almost all the time. Pretty much when I got back from from my from Orlando when I was out there for a few months, pretty much when I got back from there, like I just I told you like we was just we was making music like ten tracks a day. So he was just like okay, he was more familiar with the chem. He was he was like he was understanding the sound that I was craving for him. He was like okay, this is my sound. And the chemistry was just, you know what I'm saying, like that. So we both felt like we was made for each other. God put us in a in a in a perfect position. I I feel you. So you and Thug are working together, and then the first time Young Thug gets on my radar was when Stoner comes out. Hmm. You uh, produced that? No, I ain't produced Stoner. You didn't produce Stoner. But that was like his first, like first hit record. Is that is that a fair set? Yeah, you know, yeah, statement? yeah, yeah, not for real. And it seemed like now after that, that's when Birdman kind of steps in. Right. So what really happened when Birdman 
got in the picture? Oh, uh, I feel like Birdman, when he got in the picture, he kind of just stamped us, you know what I'm saying? He kind of, he kind of, you know, was, he was just fucking with us, he was rocking with us. He liked the music. When we went to LA the first time, he was just loving the music that me and Doug was making on the spot. Like we was creating and he was just feeling the flow, he was feeling the chemistry. He's like, oh yeah, I like these two young cats. These guys right here, they next up. So he was just rocking with the campaign. Okay. And and Birdman actually was quoted saying that, you know, London on the track is the best producer in the business as we speak today. I remember I was there. I was playing I was playing the piano while he was saying it. <laughs> now you talking about a man that sold like a billion records. You know, like I, I'd heard of these, I haven't seen them, but you know, I heard about these plaques in his house that's like a one billion sold. Now, yeah. how does it feel when someone of that stature says that you're the best producer in the business right now? It's a blessing. You know, it just, it keep me pumped, it keep me motivated. You know what I'm saying, it keep me going. I was like, okay, he say that, I gotta, when, when, I, when, it, when it's something on his face that look that he's saying, I just gotta cover him and keep going. You know what I'm saying? So if Thug ever say, if Thug say I'm the best producer he like to work with, I just gotta keep working. You know what I'm saying? That you know, to match up with those words, we gotta keep going. We gotta make it make it history. Now you saying that, Bird saying that, that just keep me pumped. It, it inspires me. You know what I'm saying? Well, Young Thug actually said that that you'll become the, the greatest producer ever. When he said that, that touched my soul. And I was just, I, I was happy he said that. I, was, I mean, those are some pretty big boots to fill. I mean, because you talk about Quincy Jones, yeah. Jermaine Dupri, Dr. Dre. Yeah, and him seeing that is... Timberland, Pharrell, like you talking about, there's a lot of yeah. great producers out there, man. He he know, he, he, he seen the work ethic, he see the work in me, he see it. You know, he spoke, he's speaking into existence. What do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like like he was a hater. Uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she's going to tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coat everywhere. 